Solomon's Vegas Adventures. What's going on everybody? Solomon here with another episode of Solomon's Vegas Adventures. This is that geologic edition of the Ruby Mountains Adventure. So I'm going to talk to you guys about the geology and we're going to look at some cool rocks and stuff and learn some geologic history of the Ruby Mountains. So let's go. As previously alluded to in the previous video outlining hiking in the Ruby Mountains, the Ruby Mountains are a real beautiful alpine range located near Elko in northeastern Nevada. Refer to that video with directions on how to get there. Let's talk some geology now. The Ruby Mountains document the tectonic processes that have shaped Nevada scintillatingly, and are a textbook example of a metamorphic core complex. I discuss the mechanisms of metamorphic core complexes at length in the El Dorado Mountains video, so feel free to give that video a watch to learn more about the geophysical aspects of metamorphic core complexes. The strata that composes the rubies is complex, and includes a highly metamorphosed melange of marble, schist, quartzite, gneiss, migmatite, and mylonite, as well as extensive granite plutons. The protoliths of these highly metamorphosed rocks are Cambrian to Ordovician limestones, shales, and sandstones, roughly 540 to 440 million years old. The interesting thing is these rocks correlate with other sedimentary rocks found throughout Nevada, except these ones have been absolutely plowed by Mother Nature's tectonic forces. The rocks in the Ruby Mountains and East Humboldt Range are some of the deepest rocks exposed in the basin and range, originating roughly 20 kilometers below the earth and transported to the surface episodically via detachment faults starting around 17 million years ago and continuing today. Furthermore, the oldest rocks found in the basin and range outcrop in the East Humboldt Range, granites and gneisses dating back to the Archean, almost 4 billion years old. As aforementioned, the Ruby Mountains are mainly composed of highly metamorphosed strata originally deposited as shallow marine sedimentary rocks from the Cambrian or Ordovician periods. The central Ruby Mountains, including Lamoille Canyon, is the core of the metamorphic core complex. The neighboring East Humboldt Range to the northeast is also composed of highly metamorphosed and plutonic strata, showcasing the core of the metamorphic core. The western edge of the Ruby Mountains are in the myelinitic zone of the core complex, meaning the main detachment fault of the system is in close proximity to this area. Mylonite is a high-grade metamorphic rock that showcases ductile deformation, shearing of molten rock by tectonic processes that elongate minerals by reducing grain size. Mylonites are indicative of immense shear strain in ductile fault zones, the ductile fault zone in the Rubies being that main detachment fault. The detachment fault lies between the highly metamorphosed foot wall and the unmetamorphosed hanging wall, and though it has been eroded from the top of the rubies, it can be projected due to its low angle nature and domed structure. Moreover, the myelinitic zone has the highest grade of metamorphism and showcases shearing along the detachment fault beautifully. The main detachment fault of the Ruby Mountains is buried under alluvium west of the range and has been eroded via extensive glaciation and other erosive processes at the summit of the range. Additionally, it surfaces in the area between the Rubies and East Humboldt, as you can see by the presence of unmetamorphosed sedimentary strata in between the ranges, as well as the Mylonite next to the unmetamorphosed sedimentary strata. These detachment faults are exposed in this section of the range, but have been cut extensively by younger normal faults, some dating to the Quaternary and some still active. Thus, the detachment fault is buried under alluvium east and west of the range, and the cross-section of the rubies looks like what I just showed you. Plutonism began in the area during the severe orogeny of the Cretaceous period when felsic magma intruded the area, but the main granite pluton in the range dates back to the late Eocene, dated as 36 million years old via uranium-lead dating. The pluton is colloquially known as the Harrison Pass pluton. The southern Ruby Mountains are composed of unmetamorphosed sedimentary strata and are not a part of the metamorphic core complex. The Ruby Mountains are relatively unique in regards to other Nevada ranges as they were heavily glaciated during the last ice age. As such, glacial geomorphic structures are numerous in the Rubies, including U-shaped valleys, hanging valleys, moraines, arets, horns, and cirques. Now let's look at some of the rocks and minerals in the metamorphic core of the Rubies, found on the Ruby Crest Trail at the upper reaches of Lamoille Canyon, en route to Liberty Lake. For directions to the hike, please refer to the previous video on the Ruby Mountains. Enough chit chat, let's go. It's pretty dusty, but this right here is a real nice plate of muscovite. There's quartz there. And this uh, goes to show you some of that geologic history here in the Ruby Mountains. The rocks here are all granites, gneisses, marbles, quartzites, and schists. Highly metamorphosed strata related to a metamorphic core complex, which I discussed in the, but first, some background info portion of the video. But here's some proof of that, just looking at the rocks. We got some pegmatite action going on right here. See that quartz and that feldspar. And look at, look at all that quartz. 
There's a nice mica muscovite in there too. See this one right here? Look at how shiny that boy is. That's muscovite right there. Real cool. And of quartz, I mean, of course, look at all this massive quartz right here. This is all quartz, this is all a vein of it. Part of that pegmatite, that's pegmarite. It's more of that pegmatite veinage of some nice quartz and feldspars, a little bit of micas in this nice, that's the type of rock out here, nice, highly folded, banded, metamorphic rock that's just been subject to the absolute carnage. Get all that super shiny muscovite. Look at this chunk of muscovite I found. Shiny, if I can get it to shine. Oh, there we go. So beautiful. So freaking beautiful, oh my God. This outcrop right here, guys, just greatly shows the tectonic processes that were at work here in the Ruby Mountains. This is all highly metamorphosed strata. And you see those little like eye looking things. Those are just, you know, I think they're either quartz or feldspar. Let's see, yeah, quartz that just get stretched along these foliations, which uh, this is pretty nice. I'd like to say that this outcrop right here is marble, it's foliated marble. I mean, look at that. It's pretty, it's pretty deformed, I'll tell you that. It's pretty damn deformed, pretty cool. The protoliths of these, which are the types of rocks they were before they were deformed, um, are Cambrian interbedded limestones and shales. And uh, I believe that if my science is correct, Limestone gets metamorphosed into marble, and shale gets metamorphosed into schist. Well, slate, then schist, then gneiss. But the grade here is kind of high schist, low gneiss, so I think this is interbedded marble and schist. That's some good schist. This outcrop of interbedded marble and schist cut by these pegmatite dikes, vein-looking things right there, and then you've got granite lying on top of it. It's pretty cool. Looks like a there's definitely been some some movement there. Pretty cool. Nice. Well, schist, but you know, nice. Nice quartz up here. You can find. Pretty cool. Making our way up to uh, Liberty Pass here on the uh, Ruby Crest Trail. Let's go. Lamoille Lake down there. Just more peaks in the rubies. That one right there is Ruby Dome, the high point at 11,387 feet. If we pan over here, looking down into the canyon slash valley, we can start to see other mountain ranges peeking up over there. And one thing that I did want to show you guys is this granite right here. All those quartz, it's all smoky quartz, which is that aluminum rich quartz. Pretty cool. We got this green gray marble up here. We got that epidote growing in there. Pretty cool. You know what I always say about epidote. That's epidope. And look at these nice shiny black crystals right here. I can't confidently say if this is biotite hornblende or something else because they're too small, but pretty nice crystals. Look at all this mica right here. That's all phlogopite. Kind of halfway between muscovite and biotite. It's Really cool, really cool minerals here. This little band of quartz here. It's all solid quartz. I know, right? I told You didn't see this coming up? Didn't see it coming up. <laughs> real nice quartz vein. So if you look right here, look at this real black mineral. Could be biotite, could be hornblende. Can see it shiny, very shiny, very vitreous in the sun. But if we look down here, we can see some real nice specimens of it. And you can definitely see it there and there. And it turns out that this is hornblende. You can see the characteristic 60-120 cleavage on these specimens here. Um, and if you look at it, it looks like tourmaline. It could be confused with tourmaline, that shoral iron end member, especially those looking like that. But it's hornblende. You can see the 60-120 cleavage in the other specimens. And this is a pretty cool find. You know, it shows you that it's a pegmatite here in the Ruby Mountains. Dope. Oh, mama. Here's a real nice 
gorgeous example of some mica in this rock right here as you guys can tell that's uh that's phlogopite it's uh it's different than biotite and different than muscovite it's uh kind of in between them in a way if you thought of it compositionally um but very cool there's just garnet galore out here and that's the namesake of the ruby mountains here's even more of the gar those garnets right there they named the ruby mountains the ruby mountains because of all the garnets they thought that the garnets were ruby but they were just garnets they probably said ah, garnet these are some nice specimens here that showcase the geologic history of the locale the top rock is schist and the bottom rock is marble and the uh sedimentary strata here was interbedded marble uh sorry not marble limestones and shales dating back to the cambrian but they got metamorphosed the shale turned into schist and the limestone turned into marble so there you go and you can see there's foliation in this marble which shows the uh active tectonic processes there was a shearing aspect to this too rather than just high temperature or pressure and that my friends is the metamorphic core complex of the ruby mountains pretty cool you can see the story in the rocks that's why i love geology thank you for tuning in to another episode of solomon's vegas adventures if you enjoy content like this please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and check out some of our other adventures right here as always guys peace